here to help us celebrate the 30 years of this fantastic place, Burwell Museum. It was started by the vision of some other people. And one of them, one of those originators is here. He's sitting over there underneath bunting with a hat on his head on the corner and his hands on his stick. That's Paul. Now, whether he was the inspiration of the actual museum or whether it was his wife that wanted to get rid of all the stuff that was in his shed that he used to take out and go and talk to people around the village about, I don't know. So it's either him or his wife's pushing him to get him out of the shed, to get her shed back. But... Because of his inspiration and the, the collection of things that he had, he and a few others got going. And the museum, as you see it today, is a result of their vision and their wanting to make the things that it is. They had seen so much in their lifetime, in their short lifetimes then, that had changed. I mean, if you think about fridges, nobody had a fridge immediately after the war. Nobody had a fridge immediately after the war, but now everybody's got fridges, freezers and whatever. They saw their lives changing so much that soon it would all be forgotten. And it was that inspiration that started the museum as it was. The trigger was the milk. The people who built the estate all the way around here wanted to knock it down, would you believe? But because it's a listed building, they weren't allowed to. So they sold it for five pounds on condition that it was looked after. And so the Burwell Museum, the, the Burwell Trust was set up. And then they started to look for what else they could do with it. By the mill, there's a hedge. And Paul's idea was to put a shed over the hedge and put his stuff into that. And in fact, the whole of the museum could be could be called the history of the sheds because it's sheds that have added and grown. The biggest one was the barn, which is the one at the back there. And there were three of them, two Jones and Paul. I'm not very good on names, so I'm, I'm kind of missing people out. So if I miss you out, I'm not going to mention any more. And those three went out onto the fence and they got this derelict barn that was falling to pieces and in the farmer's way. And they took it to pieces, they transported it back, stuck it over there and rebuilt it. And if you go in it and look up at the roof, you can see some of the original trusses that they put in it. No health and safety laws in those days, so they just did it. They didn't get permission from anybody, but they just did it. All of this land belongs to the council, and it's part of the allotment, and they allowed us to do it. And as they went on, the shed grew to more sheds and, you should, and it's still going on today I mean, you can call it the history of sheds really I mean, looking at the old ones and the new ones and the little ones, they're all over the place <laughs> but their enthusiasm their vision really has transformed this place, I mean obviously they had a lot of help, they didn't do it entirely by themselves they had volunteers who came and helped them construct it, transport stuff to shove things in corners to get things worked out they had to have money, so they had friends who started a friend society who raised the money that they needed to get it going. And that derelict, derelict place became the barn that you can see. So, not only did the friends raise a lot of money, they used to have jumble sales and barn sales and garage sales and anything they could do to raise money. <laughs> They all, we also were lucky enough to receive over the years different legacies and different people who have given money to help us go on. So that it's expanded to the number of sheds that you can see around here now. Vintage vehicle one over here is filled with an enormous number of things. They have lots of things that you can look at and see and secure. And in it is the 40th birthday of Jim Neal's bus, which used to be a public transport bus, then became the school bus, and now kids can go in it and sit in it and be frightened by the school. mannequins that sit there and supposed to drive it, but they don't like that, but they do love getting on the bus. Then there's the, the warshed around the corner, there's the forge, 
which is a working forge and we do still get people to come in and work it and in fact there was a woman who gave her husband either a birthday present or a wedding present i can't remember which one it was now to be trained by a blacksmith how to make blacksmith stuff <laughs> working in there. so and then there's the hub the hub is the source of all the factual details about this and that's been done by Hazel and Christine and different other people that have helped as well so that you can go and find out in there things about the museum, about Burwell, about this whole area around and it really is incredible what they can do. <coughs> um, Linda has just completed a file of not the people who went to the First World War, the soldiers who went to the First World War, but the people who came back to Burwell, which nobody had really ever documented before. So there is a file there with a page for every person who went to the First World War and then came back. So the archives are there, the research is there, and it's a record of all the village events that there are. I've not been involved with the museum all that long. <coughs> the only reason I became involved was when the mill, which as you can imagine, needs a lot of money being spent on it, and they applied for a lottery grant. The grant couldn't be given unless the mill had the backing of the parish council. I was on the parish council at the time, still am, but I volunteered to come and sit on their trustees to be the official person that could give them the backing. So we got the money for the, from the lottery, and the mill was transformed and reinstated as it is. Sales, and that stage has only had two. Since then, we've had lottery grants, we've had donations, we've had money from different counties, um, and lots of other things. I'm proud to have been part of that museum and part of what we've done now. We only have two paid employees at the moment. One is responsible for the educational outreach and the other is, is responsible for the site management of the place to make sure that everything is safe and secure. And it's a fantastic achievement that those people who have done so much to make the place that it is, it's a brilliant place. So I do hope you all enjoy it. Go and have a wander around, see what you've got, and be inspired by what they have done. And ask yourselves, is there anything that you can do to help us in the museum? We're all volunteers. As I say, we only have two paid people on the site. All the rest are volunteers. That means people who sit in the kiosk when there's no customers, serve tea and do those things. People who sit in the tea room, people who do the odds and sobs. We have the volunteers on a Tuesday and they come in and they do all the maintenance work. That's where a lot of the sheds come from. <coughs> We've just had two new sheds so that the people who paint and the people who saw wood don't come to blows when the sawdust gets into the paint that they're trying to paint something with. So we now have two completely separate workplaces. So if you have any time, a couple of hours a week, a couple of hours a month, a couple of hours in longer periods, do please come along and help. We will be very glad to see you. So, Welcome, enjoy yourselves, look around and see what we're doing. We also have these fantastic, beautiful cakes. Two for the museum. Sorry, I keep going out of seat after. Two to celebrate the museum, made by, I can't remember the name. Anna Jacobs! Anna, by Anna, there she is. Yes, well done, they're beautiful, Anna. They're really Thank you, beautiful. Anna. And then there's the one for... Um, Jim Neal's bus, made by his daughter. Is that right? Jim? Yes. Is it made by your daughter? Linda. Linda, Linda. made that bus. And then there's an extra one. <coughs> Just because. It's not his birthday yet, but mm. it's a good time to celebrate his birthday, which is next month's ceremony. He's one of our trustees who's been in here the, as long as ever. Simon over there, who's got the camera there. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your time here, enjoy the music, enjoy the storyteller around the corner and just enjoy and celebrate this wonderful, wonderful place. And shall we Thank sing, you. Brenda? Oh, and shall we sing? We're going to sing Happy Birthday now. You are. <laughs> Go on, who's going to join with me singing Happy Birthday? Are we ready? I don't know, I'll pick a note. You just join in. Okay. Too high, I'm sorry. If it's too low, I'm sorry as well. 
Right, here we go. Sing happy birthday to the mill and all their lovely volunteers and trustees. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mill Museum. Happy birthday to you. Good round of applause. And there should be enough cake for everybody to have a taste. <laughs> <laughs> Woo!